You're looking good, man. Glad to be here. I'm <laughs> live, upright, and still in the game, brother. Yeah. Across all worlds, we're here for another episode. Last episode, and you can, by the way, find uh, us at acrossallworlds.com. All of our stuff is there. You talked about Patmos in the last book. I think we're going to probably come full circle in this book because we talked Trinitarian faith. And you kind of, I think you you broke a record. He was. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done anything in 28 minutes like that. My heart was burning by the time you were done with all the practical application, the relational, and one of the, you know, the, the story of the Trinity and, and, and the relational way in which it applies to our lives. You know, I, I tell my, my, my kids, and we were talking about this before we, we were rolling, I, you know, the, my passion as a, as a dad was that I wanted them to know the names of God, but more than the names of God, I wanted them to have an encounter with the interpretation. I wanted there to be the face-to-face -face because it is the thing that sustains. I think we talked a couple episodes back. The thing that sustains is the face-to-face, -face, the revelation of Christ within me, this beautiful. And beginning to see that as a concrete reality in your life. And the, the biblical pattern is that God does something new with his people. Yeah. Mount Moriah, the sacrifice of Isaac, the stopping of that, yeah. the Lord providing the lamb, and then he names himself. That's good. He gives himself a new name based on that encounter. Yes. Now, now you know my name is Jehovah Jireh. Yahweh, right. I, I will provide. Yeah. There's nothing you can put on the table here. You need yeah. to know that at the very beginning. And so that happens all throughout the stuff, the, the old uh, te or the Hebrew Bible. When you come to the New Testament, you have a new, and it's not new, but it, it's certainly more concrete and real. Yeah. And that is the revelation of the, of the Father, Son, Spirit. And guess what? You get a new name. Huh. To baptize into the name singular of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Yeah. That's the new that's the new name, quote, the new revelation that's given to us in the new covenant. Just, which gathers up all that I was just yeah. hinting at in the yeah, Old yeah. Testament. It sustains us the the what you said, if you know God as a provider for my kids, if I want them I, it's it's the encounter that becomes a part of their identity, part of who they are and you know, I, I, I say this often to my kids, you know, it's not complicated. He's not, you know, this is where I have to simplify it, right? But it's, the, he's not complicated. He's love. And his love is other sin and self-giving. It is, if you feel love for your sister, I'd say this to my son, that is the voice of God. That is the nature of God. That is the relationship. You're actually face to face with God in that moment. Like, this is how you recognize, you know, folks are always saying, how do I hear his voice? How do I... Uh, I feel like we've raised people in the context of separation as though hearing God is, is a difficult thing. Some, somehow knowing who he is is a difficult thing. And mm. for my kids, I wanted them to know that it's as simple as you recognizing when you feel that affection for your mom, you are actually face to face with Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You are participating in the relational um, that, revelation. That expression, that feeling, that expression, that outgoing is the life of the Trinity that's it. in you coming out. That's exactly and, it. And, and that's why Jesus in John 8, 12, um, he says, <clears throat> I am the light of the cosmos, uh, the world, not even the Christians. But that's good. I am the light of the cosmos yeah. because, because, John 1 again, you have your, your origin and meaning in me. And then he says, the one who follows me, the one who takes the baby steps that we were talking about, the one who walks with me, this one will never, ever uh, be in the darkness because there's only one, yeah. the lie of separation, uh, but shall experience the light of life. And I mean, I prayed for years about that verse because there's so much. What is this about? Are you talking about simplifying? It's simplified, <laughs> but it's equals MC sure. squared. Sure. <laughs> and finally begin to, it finally began to dawn on me that he's saying, Baxter, as you take sides with me, yeah. with my mind, with my eyes, you take those baby steps, you're, you're going to begin to see things in a different way. And one of the things that you're going to be seeing different, not only my Father, not only Jesus, not only the Holy Spirit, but you're going to begin to see yourself and you're going to begin to interpret your That's life good. differently. Yeah. So Jesus is light on our uh, existence now. He's, he's not saying now, okay, you got this revelation. Now let's go create a kingdom. He said, no, this has been in you and through you all the time. Yeah. And now I'm in the, your darkness, illuminating it so you can begin to see uh, who you really are. 
And so when people hear messages, that they, they, they always think, okay, uh, minimize my entire life to this point. Now I'm, I prayed a new prayer, and now I'm going to have a new walk. And, and it, no, I'm, I'm having a, a more enlightened situation. And uh, Laura, uh, when I were talking, that's our oldest daughter, and she's Caroline Cooper and Lucy's mom. Caroline's eight now. But a couple of years ago, she, uh, Laura asked me a question. She said, Dad, I was t- talking to Caroline, and there was some problem or something she was concerned about. And I said, we well, need to pray about it. And she says, well, I'm going to do pray, but I don't ever hear anything back. Yeah. And she said, so how, what would you say, Dad? And I said, I said, well, you know how Caroline loves to paint and draw. In fact, I gave her, uh, we did, we gave her a set of really nice markers and paper, and she's always going about, she loves doing it. I said, and she said, yeah. I said, well, start there. Come on. So man. start there with, okay, this is something that, that she, <laughs> you don't have to tell her to go paint. Yeah. You know, learn to love painting. I mean, it's already there. That's it. And that's not her love. That's Jesus' love for his so creation. Good. So I said, once she begins to identify in her mind, what does it mean to share in God's life? Or what does it mean to hear from God? When I'm painting, it's not just me. He's the one that loves music and loves art, loves creativity, whether it's making lures or painting pictures or, or yeah. doing a garden or, yeah. or cooking supper for yeah. friends. That's all begins in the family of origin yeah. with the Father, Son, and Spirit. And they share it with us and we're living it out and we believe we're separated from God. So so all of this gets minimized and trivialized so much as so. there is no divine life in yeah, that. So on. whatever they mean by getting saved, it n- has nothing to do with their life prior to that moment. Yeah. That's all. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, someday high in the sky, we can experience that. One day. One day. One day. Yeah. And maybe if maybe. we do it right. If, if we, we do, do it right, say the right prayer and hold our tongue the right way. And, and that goes back to, to, you know, I don't want to get too deep on this because it's so beautiful. But at the same time, that goes back to Arianism and to Greek separation mentality and the fallen mind mentality of separation. God's up there. We're here. Even Jesus is now up there. Yeah. And we have a book. And if you want to be godly, you know, Pray, yeah. read your Bible, yeah. give, yeah. Uh, don't do certain things. And that's not the message of what Jesus is saying. He says, guys, I am in you yeah. sharing my love, my passion, my creativity, my Holy Spirit. Come on. I'm sharing my Father's blessedness and his goodness and his, his non-abandoning, no holes barred and will never <laughs> give up on you love. Yeah, I'm putting that in. And look at how it's coming out, Baxter. It's been coming out of you your whole life. But bless your heart. You know, you never saw that as me. I love that God is a, 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 a gen, Southern gentleman. Bless your heart. <laughs> well, I want to touch touch on that, and you know, we could even talk uh, penal substitutionary atonement maybe in the, ne- in the next episode. But I think what you're tapping on is profound because this idea of separation, uh, well, the relational God, this Trinitarian faith, invites you into a relational God in which you're 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 pat you're invited into dreaming with him and into participating uh, in all creation with him so i have a similar story right god's setting me free my father's setting me free from this lie of separation and uh there's this phrase i'd hang out with a friend and you, you've probably been in the room and somebody will say i would never move there and there's a friend who goes oh careful what you say uh, god was going to send you to the exact place that you you'll never go it's that he wants the worst for you instead of the best for you. Like he's going to, but my son, I wanted my son to learn how to experience God's presence. And I was worried that uh, he seemed more interested about reading or playing or uh, our, our prayer times at night were never deep. I'd pray and he'd just say the words behind me. And as a dad, I was like, oh, I really want him to learn how to pray. And uh, my wife and I were in agreement, no dogs. Our kids were young. We weren't going to get a puppy. But one day I'm walking down the stairs. Be careful what you say you're not going to do. Be careful what you say, right? I, well, I, I thought we were in agreement, but I walked down the stairs. I look into the room and she's at the computer looking at puppies with the kids. And I knew it was over then. I'm like, if my wife is looking at puppies with the kids, it's over. So I come back from around my kids. They're, they're telling me, puppy, puppy, puppy. They've drawn pictures. So I'm like, I'm like, what about the poop? You going to pick up the poop? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to pick up the poop. Sure, of course. They, of course. By the way, they've never picked up yeah. the poop. And uh, I, I come back from the, a meeting and they're there again. They've got they've drawn more things. Now they got a picture of them picking up the poop. Right. Like all of the practical things that I throw at them, knowing that I'm probably a, a, mom's already looked at puppies. But bedtime, I'm doing the regular bedtime routine and uh, they don't care about anything but puppies. 
So I finally, I get him separated, I put my daughter, and I take my son to the room, and I'm about to put him in bed. He wants to talk about puppies, and I'm like, no, we're not going to talk about puppies, but I'm going to let you go to get it. And I hear, I'm about to pray for him, and I'm wanting him to hear from God. I'm wanting him to interact with God. And, I, and I'm about to put him in bed, and, I, and I, I hear my Heavenly Father say, I want you to uh, ask him to pray for a puppy. And whatever he says is which, what, what we're going to do. And as soon as my father said that, I got really emotional because it was really deep for me because I already knew what my son was going to hear because he it was the desire of his heart. So I looked at my son and I said, Desire of the father's heart, which, share it with your son. Exactly. Well, and so I got really emotional because it was a foreign thought that my heavenly father wanted my son to have a puppy and looked at that as the perfect opportunity to have intimate connection with him. And so I, I set the table for him. I said to my, I said to my son, I said, listen, I said, listen, I want you to pray tonight. And whatever, but listen, I want you to just really settle your heart and hear, because I think our father has something to say to you. And whatever he says about a dog, puppy, you tell me, and I'll make up whatever he says. That's what we're gonna do. So I walk out of the room, and uh, like literally five seconds later, because this is my son. If you know him, he comes out, Dad. I heard him. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like I, I was like, no, we're gonna we're gonna actually get something out of this. I said, listen, son. I said, I need you to go back in. I'm really. I want you to hear from him. So I want you to tell me how, what, he, what he tells you. So I go downstairs, about three minutes, he comes down, just grinning ear to ear, and he says, Daddy, Father, talk to me. We're going to get a puppy. And I, I, I was emotional because I knew when I walked out of the room we were getting a puppy. But it's that thing. It's that relational. It's that it, when you said uh, that the, the woman hugging the, the, the daughter, you know, the daughter or the grandma hugging, hugging, hugging this young girl. I'm like, these are the moments in life where you're encountering his affection. And that story grabs me. But with me. separation laid over that, you don't know it's his affection. You don't know it's his affection. And I, and I would have never thought about inviting my heavenly father into the conversation around a puppy because of the separation theology I had. It was like the thing that you want isn't necessarily the thing you can trust. And so for me, the great shift in that was, it was as big a deal for me as yeah. it was for my son because I realized, oh, my father cares about the desires. His desires are my son's desires and my son's desires. And what a beautiful opportunity to participate in hearing from, from the voice of God. And, it, you know, interpret. I, I thought you were, you were going to tell that story at the end and say, he comes down and says, Dad, I heard from God. Mom already got the puppy yesterday. He said, don't you? He said, it was okay to tell you now. <laughs> and that would have been true as well. <laughs> oh, man. I think, I think it's, it's in the concreteness that we interpret because we're, we're learning to see, as we see this in our own lives, yeah. as we see, oh, my concern for that little lady's gutter that had fallen, that was not me. Right. That right. didn't have its origin in me. It had its origin in the Father, Son, and the Good, the good Shepherd shared it with me. If you don't know you and you think it's you, sure. so you're either going to get real proud of yourself right. or eventually you're going to burn out driving around fixing everybody's stuff. Right. Or, you know, no, no. And once you see that in your own life, you begin to see it and identify it in others. So it's actually what we're doing with our children and grandchildren. It, it, prayer time, teach Caroline, Father, thank you for putting your creative heart in me yeah i know you love color obviously yeah and all kinds of diversity <laughs> right. and beauty right. and you did this for me and i right. thank you for it i'll have more please yeah so now she's thinking about her own experience in love and it sees the father son spirit in that yeah. well that's true of every person on earth on. but because of the Aryan framework yeah. that we peddle in the name of jesus yeah. in the west yeah. people are separated yeah. and the nature of salvation is about going to heaven when you die. Just This is the critical point. It's shifted your focus. Salvation is about saying a prayer, getting Jesus in so I can go to heaven when I die. No, salvation is about experiencing Jesus' relationship, His communion, His blessedness, His goodness with His Father in the Holy Spirit in my life now. So now I'm not trying to get in, hopefully one day, now I get to live from yes. the affirmation as you like to talk about not to it, but from it. And I get to see it in very concrete ways. And for me, um, I, I don't know if in some of our episodes I told the story when I was in Scotland in my first fit of laughter. Did I tell that? I don't, I don't know. Right. It's a good book. It's a pretty good book. Humble guy wrote it. Good looking humble guy. Uh, and, a, and an amazing fellow endorsed it. Yeah, yeah John Crowder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Crossallworlds.com is where you can find us. We're loving this conversation. Listen, we're, uh, we're supported by you guys, and we're grateful when you partner with us that way. Uh, uh, if you need to find our resources, Crossallworlds.com. Got it. Yep. You learn fast. Yeah, we're getting pretty good at this. Love you guys. Thank you. We sold everything we had back in, in the uh, mid-'80s and moved to Scotland to go study with uh, J.B. Torrance at the University of Aberdeen King's College. And so on Sunday morning, Church of Scotland Church, I am um, sitting there with Beth, and you know, we're getting ready to worship God, which means in the Presbyterian world, you're pretty quiet. Uh-huh. And I just start laughing. <laughs> I mean, right. I had never heard of this at all. Uh-huh. I mean, and, and I love to tell my friend Michael LaFleur that this happened long before it happened to you, the old Presbyterian. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I just start laughing like this, and Beth said, are you okay? And I said, no. And she said, do we need to leave? And I said, well, let me just try to call. And I could not stop laughing. And it wasn't, I wasn't loud, but it was shaking the pew. Right. Everybody's looking. Right, right. So I started to get up and I thought, well, I'll just wait. So calm down. Anyway, we got home and she said, what was that about? I said, I have no idea what it was about. <laughs> and so after lunch and um, I went upstairs in my little cubicle of a room where I was doing my PhD and working on it, I turned over to Galatians. Four and I was reading about Abba Father and you're no oh Lord one day please please yeah and and yeah, yeah, yeah. and I heard the Lord, maybe maybe one day back here if you hang on yeah. you'll get to hear this you yeah. know you'll get to hear this yeah. and so uh, two things happened he said pull the bulletin out so I pulled out of my Bible he says what what's the first thing on the order of worship I said the invocation 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 is where the people have gathered and we now invoke the presence and blessing of God upon this thy service of worship. And I started laughing all over again. And again, to make a long story short, I finally heard, Baxter, the the only reason everyone in that building this morning got out of bed and cared about any of this was because of my love for my father in them. And they all did this thinking they're doing it on their own. Right. And they get there on their own, dressed up, going to worship me and my father, thinking that if they're separated from me, and now they're going to evoke my presence. And I'm just laughing all over. And he said, but think about this. Um, where are you? And I said, I'm in Scotland. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm working on my dissertation. He said, well, what's it titled? I said, knowing God and the theology of T.F. Torrance, participation in the Son's knowledge of the Father yeah. in the Spirit. And he's like, let me get this straight. <laughs> uh, you sold everything that you have. Right. And brought your wife over here where you're, you're, you're in a good spot, but it's cold, windy. <laughs> and you spend all day long, every day studying about me and my father. And you then pray one day, oh, please, one day may I experience Abba Father. Yeah. And he said, Baxter, I've had my Abba Father Come in on. you since you were a little boy. How do you think you went on this journey? Come on. You see, I had misinterpreted my whole life, either in pride thinking, well, I'm going to be the man of God and do whatever, or eventually be exhausted because it's meaningless. And that's the backstory of Patmos. Burned out suicidal theologian, been there, done that, done all the the different churches and done what the preacher said do. But he never had an Abba Father experience, although he was living in it the whole time. And but nobody told him that. And so he's looking outside of himself for something to lead him to an experience. And I was just like, man, that's the light of life. Yes. That's the light shining right on you. Look at your life, Baxter. You've been talking about this with me since you were four years old. And five, you remember six when you were sitting on the chair and uh, swing and you were thinking about yeah. union with me at yeah, six and right. seven years yeah. old? That yeah. was me. That was that's me. Right. Yeah. I, I saw the father right. in you right. all the way over here. Right. Now look at where you yeah. are, you know? And I just like blew me away. I wow. thought that's the, the significance of it because if you don't begin with Trinity, you're not going to come to a place where you recognize that salvation, kingdom, atonement, um, adoption, all these great biblical words, the meaning of those words through. is Jesus' yeah. union with his Father in yes. us, yes. is Jesus' anointing in the Holy Spirit in us, being shared with us. Yeah. Now we can begin to reinterpret our lives. Yeah. That's the light of life. Yeah. And it just becomes more and more real. And then you begin to notice it in other people who are not looking for Jesus in them. They're looking to try to do right because that's what the preacher told them to do. It's the external religion. Yeah. A distant deity gave us a book. We've got principles. We're going to do this. Now, this is about communion. Yeah. And that's what Jesus says. This is what eternal life is. It's knowing my Father. 
And then he qualifies that in the end. Father, I have made you known to them and I will make you known in order that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them as the one anointed. Then they free to live and share in my heart. And that's why he says you abide in me and you'll bear much fruit. The family life is going to come pouring out of you. I was having a conversation with someone the other day and I said, you know, it's amazing uh, that I can sit in a room with a, another brother who thinks in the context of separation and we can use the same words and sometimes they might even be interpreted like we might interpret you know, um, them the same way, but the why is very different and the fruit is always different because from separation you might, you might describe worship and it might look the same way. You, know, you might describe an act of faith and it might look the same way, but one person's doing it from a place of desperation, trying to get somewhere. As you said, it'll either wear you, it'll either give you pride, you know, you'll either older brother or you'll prodigal. I mean, those are your two options in that paradigm. And this is why for me, it's so much fun. And where I believe we're awakening to is this, this place of union, this relational um, revelation that invites you into a why that is, is, is responsive it's what you said now when you when you work on the gutter it's a response out of your union and it's it's not something you're striving to do to prove to earn to get you're actually just re living in the moment responsive you're giving yourself to participate in in the light in jesus in his heart yeah and that's what wake taking the phone call at 3 30 in the morning is that's what inviting somebody over for coffee is that's what farming is that's what being a mother and a father and a friend is that's what Come being on. a car mechanic is. That's Come what on. being an airplane pilot or a stewardess or flight attendant. I mean, all, all of these things are not just human. Yeah. This is the life of the Blessed Trinity coming to concrete, personal, relational expression in human beings. Yeah. And nobody sees that. They just see that as just being a human being. Yeah. So now they're going to go to church on Sunday and their whole life that week doesn't count as anything to do with the kingdom. Right. So the preacher's going to tell them what it's got to do to bring God in. And, do, you know, it's just like, whoa, 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 just stop and let the light shine and blow everybody's mind for a while. And it instantaneously uh, destroys the basis of all the isms and the divisions. Because once I see this in myself, as I'm beginning to realize that my love for theology does not originate Come from on. me. It starts with Jesus and his father. And he's in me saying, what's this? This is going to be a wild ride, son. Come on. Because I'm going to take you to a place where you can't conceive Come right now because yeah. you're still delusional. Yeah. You know? But once you see it in yourself, you begin to see it in others, even in your enemies. That's good. You know, yeah. and you begin to recognize that Jesus is everywhere. Yeah. And you're like, oh, the world suddenly changed on me yeah. because I'm seeing it, beginning to see it uh, in the light of who Jesus is. Yeah. yeah. As the Father's eternal Son, the anointed one in us all, Christ in you, the assurance or hope <laughs> of glory. I want to ask a question, but we got just a couple minutes left. Would you can ask? We can come back to it. Okay. Well, it's the it's the I love the liberty and the freedom of this gospel because I get to live in response, and I'm not I'm not having to earn something. I'm awakening and and or maintaining and, and, and maintaining and then there's there's these moments where there is a manifest presence. I'm curious about how we would navigate that because, you know, as the charismatic, I've been in the meeting, and you can't deny, you know, it's the come down language that I'm like, okay, the language is wrong, but there is um, there's moments where I realize, oh, I was not aware of of your presence. Or, or, or now you're talking. Room. And uh, how do I live in a greater awareness yes. of our union? So maybe. Now, how do you live in a greater awareness of the manifest presence all the time? All the time. Well, this is the light where you're going to begin to see, because when you see something happening in another person's heart, that is the manifest That's presence. That's right. That's right. Don't, we, we can't identify it with one particular feeling. Yeah. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's, it's measureless. It's beyond all you can imagine the moment you think you've, you've figured it out. That's the, the, my, one of my mantras, the, the recognition of the sacred presence of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in every person, it, moment, and place is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. It's the revelation 
of what he is. I'm getting chills. And then John, as he says, and maybe this will be a place where I can end my part today, but John says, Aiden, what do you do when you don't see what is, when you don't see Jesus in you and other people? What do you do? He said, you create something that you can see and you defend it with a vengeance because it's all you think you have. You create a pseudo kingdom yeah. that's not real yeah. and it, it, it sucks the life out of you, disappoints you. But so recognizing the sacred presence, you can only do that once you realize the sacred presence, the manifest presence Come is on. everywhere. Yes. And it's your eyes opening to a reality. Come on, it's it. not you making something happen that's not Come happening. On. Come on. We're going to spend some time on that in the next episode. I have a feeling. <laughs> Who Guys. would have ever thought that Dr. Kruger would be talking about the manifest <laughs> presence? Same question about communion. Well, let's talk it's about it. Question. Let's dive into it, guys. We love, uh, I love doing this with you. I, I really it's do. Fun. I enjoy these conversations. They're life-giving for me. Uh, I, I pray that they're blessing you guys. Acrossallworlds.com is where you can find both of us. It'll take you to our books and to some more teaching. Um, Paracoresis.org, familystory.org, also websites you can go to. Appreciate you guys, and we'll catch you at the next episode. i